You're tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. Refuge Temple Church, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. The church chosen by God for the blessings of the multitude. We're the anointed, Bishop Charles Wright Sr. is pastor, and Bishop William Wilkins Jr. is the assistant pastor. Join us now, where service is already in progress. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, it's party call Sunday. I need you to just get excited. Come on about the Holy Ghost. Anybody excited about Pentecost? Come on and open your mouth and bless him. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, that's it. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. For he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Come on, I did somebody to yell Jesus. Come on, somebody to yell Jesus. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, we go to church right here, y'all. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Come on, praise team. Into his, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Anybody just thankful? I said, anybody just thankful? It shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. Through the wrong way, it is the light today. Baptized in Jesus' name. Help me say, young, young and old. And the Holy Ghost will us the Because the evening. Shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory, the path to glory, you will surely find. Through the holy way, it is the 
Rejoice and be glad in it. And this is a special day to us. Of course, here at Greater Methodist Temple, our choir sang a medley of Pentecostal hymns, old Pentecostal hymns. We thank God for this day. On this day, around 2,000 years ago, our Lord sent the Holy Spirit, incorporating the 120 that were in the upper room into the church, the body of Christ. And we're so glad to be continuing that tradition today of praising and magnifying the Lord for all that God has done for us. This service is coming to you from Greater Refuge Temple Church, the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in his heart. We are so glad that the Lord has blessed us and given us the Holy Spirit and we rejoice in God today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It has been said that more things are wrought by prayer than the world has ever dreamed of. We're going to at this time have our prayer for the service, prayer of consecration for the hand of God to be upon us. For the Lord to bless us, his presence will stay with us today as we worship together on this Pentecost Sunday. We praise the Lord and we thank him for the power of the Holy Spirit. As we begin our reading of our scripture, our prayer first and then our scripture, we ask that you would join us in prayer, knowing how God has blessed you, hallelujah, brought you through this fast. You've always so been on a fast for Pentecost. And it will end, it ended this morning, really. And thank God for those who joined. I know you feel better in the Lord today because you fasted, sacrificed, and turned down your plate for nine days. And the Lord blessed you and brought you to this tenth day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we bow our heads in prayer, oh dear God, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we magnify your name. Hallelujah, we thank you for bringing us to this point. We're only here by the grace and the mercy of God. Thank you, hallelujah, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Look upon your children, Lord, and bless them. All who are here gathered with us. Oh, Lord God, who have joined us via, oh God, this telecast ministry. Put your hand upon them, Lord. Touch each and every one, Lord. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, with every sickness, we ask your blessings upon them. Sanctify and cleanse them, O Lord. Also, Lord God, let thy blood prevail. Let your name be glorified. Walk into, Lord, the sick room. Hallelujah, that hospital room, into the nursing home. Wherever your children are gathered, O God, and they have some need of the touch of thy hand for physical healing. O God, for spiritual healing. Comfort of spirit, Lord God. Those of lost loved ones, and Lord God, are mourning their passing. In the name of Jesus, touch them. Move by your Holy Spirit. Sanctify. Set us apart even more. Closer in our walk with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you have done. We count it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. As we look to the Word of God for the reading of our scripture in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy that I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, in that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and sanctify it in our hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, we bless the name of the Lord and we continue in worship and ask that you continue to go with us. Let us magnify the Lord today on this Pentecost Sunday. A selection by our enhanced praise team. Come on, I dare you just begin to just open your mouth and bless him right there. Come on, worship him. Open your mouth. Come on. Hallelujah. For there's one way, Jesus. Only one way. And Jesus is the way. Come on, praise him through. Praise Praise be God. To bring us back to bring us back in sweet communion. Sweet communion. God himself oh, come on, somebody bless them right there. Come on, hallelujah! Come on, let's tell them for there is one way. For there is one way, there is one, way. and Jesus is the way.
Jesus. One way, Jesus, still today. One way, Jesus. One way, Jesus, still, still today. Just one, 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 one way to God. One, 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 one way to God. There is one, 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 one way to God. Help me say baptize. Baptize in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, praise team. Hallelujah. One way to God. Jesus is the way. And that great Shema. Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel. Lord, our God is one Lord. Thank God we are in that oneness tradition today. Here at Greater Refuge Temple, we celebrate Jesus Christ as Creator, Lord, and Savior. And I will soon come in King. One way to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blessings that we have today as the people of God. And we thank God for you. You've helped us in, uh, in your contributions over the years. For over a century. For over 100 years. We thank God for that long existence. About 102 years. We have been a corporate entity here. In the New York City area and around the world. As the Lord has blessed from our founder back in uh, 1919 and found in the Refuge Church of Christ I had become the Greater Refuge Temple, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have supported this work wonderfully well, even during the pandemic. We thank God for you and your financial support. May the Lord ever bless you. And we ask for your continued support in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you join with us at this time in giving and blessing the Lord. Uh, take your instruments if you're going to give electronically. And uh, give uh, through Givelify in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, for those who would love to give otherwise, you may do so. You may write us a check. Make it payable to Greater Refuge Temple. And the address is 2081. Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. That address again. For all tithes and offerings, send them here to Greater Refuge Temple. And that's at 2081 Adam C. Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. And the Lord will bless you real good for your continued support. Obvious work here at Greater Refuge Temple in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or if you're in the neighborhood, you may just uh, stop by. There'll be someone Monday through Friday around 9 to 4 o'clock in the daytime. And uh, the security person will assist you if you want to. You have your tithes and offerings in an envelope. You can drop it off in our secure box in our church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on supporting. Thank you for your support. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless each and every one of you. And by way of announcement, Greater Refuge Temple Church will be having in-person in -person worship service here on the first Sunday in June. We'll be here in Greater Refuge Temple Church. Hallelujah. Worship in the Lord and the Spirit and in truth. Thank God for that great expectation that we have. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us? We'll need you to call our church office and register if you would like to be a part of that worship service on the first Sunday. We will also be serving Holy Communion on the first Sunday. Call the church office and register to be with us. And on that first Sunday, we ask that you would come early. Uh, get here at least about 10 o'clock in the morning. So you can observe the protocols that are important at this time for us to have an in-person worship service. Uh, of course, you, you'll have to 
follow the directions of our ushers and our security persons. As you meet them on the outside, there will be a temperature taking of all who enter the church. And we ask that you would comply in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone coming inside the building will also have to wear a mask. And we're praying for God to cause all of this to go away after a while, but we're not there yet. So we ask you to come early, but first call and register with our church. And that number again is 212-866-1700. And may the Lord bless you real good. Look to see you, God willing, on that date, first Sunday, for our first in-person worship service with Holy Communion since the pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in our worship and praise unto God. And you've given in your offerings or prepared your offerings. We'll just pray a prayer of consecration. Oh, dear God, we thank you for your children and for their giving to help the work of the Lord. We pray your blessings upon the gift and Lord upon the giver. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And the Lord's people say, Amen. And Amen. Bless you. Now, we're going to have a selection from our praise team. And following the praise team on this Pentecost Sunday, we'll have the word of the Lord coming from our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr. Our praise team. We'll just stretch out on Jesus. Come on. Come on, put your hands together right there.
forsake me. I can stretch out, I can stretch out, I can stretch out on his word. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I feel God in here. I said, I feel God in here. Hallelujah. I said, I feel God in here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost power in here. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost power. Yes, Lord. Glory be to God. I feel the Holy Ghost presence in here with us. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has a way of making everything all right. I said the Holy Ghost has a way of making everything all right. I know you may thank God for your new Mercedes Benz and your new house, but I thank God on this morning for the Holy Ghost. I said I thank God for the Holy Ghost. better leave this thing alone but I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now glory be to God I thank God for the Holy Ghost I said I thank God for the Holy Ghost I said I thank God for the Holy Ghost oh yes Lord oh
I don't know about you, but I can't wait to June 6th when we all come together and worship together under one roof, praising and thanking God for how we got over in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yamaha. Oh, Shane Amaha. Shane in Robo Siamaha. Glory be to God. Shatama Siamaha. Oh, yes, Lord. This consecration and fast has been good to me. Amen. I've enjoyed the presence of the Lord these 10 days. Amen. Consecrating ourselves and fasting and prayer. Amen. It has been uh, wonderful for me. Amen. Uh, don't have much time. I got to cut across the field. Amen. On this morning. Uh, so that we can keep our time frame. Go with me very quickly to Acts chapter number one. Beginning at verse number four. And it reads on this wise, and being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will uh, thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. Somebody say power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Also, we're going to go into the second chapter, beginning at verse number one, and it reads on this wise, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush and mighty wind. And it filled the whole house uh, where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed, clothing tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to use on this morning the thought, when the Holy Ghost comes. When the Holy Ghost comes. Father, we thank you now for this time you've given us together. We ask now, Lord, that you would speak a word of life and a word of victory, a word of power and a word of grace into our hearts. Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you would move by your power and by your grace. Father, perhaps there's someone, Lord God, who is listening to us that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Lord God, let your word go forth like a mighty hammer, Lord God. Lord God, let it tear down every stronghold. Lord God, we ask that you set the captive free on this morning. Move me out of the way and speak to these, your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, today as we celebrate the birthday of the church, it is so ever so fitting for us on this morning that we would talk about the work and the actions of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost on this morning. Man, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is not something that we can just find in the pages of the New Testament. Many believers find or believe that uh, the Holy Spirit is just something that we find in the New Testament. But uh, for those of us who uh, have studied the word of God, we know that from the beginning of time, man, and even from the creation of man, the book of Genesis, we see even the spirit of God moving among his people. The Holy Spirit, a man in the Old Testament known as Roach in the Hebrew, amen, which simply means wind or breath. The 
movement of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit moves among the people. In the Old Testament, we know that the uh, Holy Spirit oftentimes was given to one to accomplish a task. It was God, a man who uh, involved the Holy Spirit even in the creation of, uni of the universe. We know that it is the Holy Spirit that was used to accomplish many tasks through uh, the Word of God. Uh, only through the Spirit of the Lord could we find Samson uh, killing uh, this uh, the charging lion. It was the Holy Spirit that gave him the ability to do so. We see the Holy Spirit even in the first chapter in the book of Genesis. Bible declares in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Here we go. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light and God saw the light and it was good. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament dwelled among the people to accomplish a task, oftentimes to, uh, in a temporary form. The Holy Spirit would stand up uh, in the life of the believer. The Holy Spirit would stand up tall and help them to accomplish a task. Man, we see uh, in the New Testament, we would see the Holy Spirit not as a temporary, but the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. In the Old Testament, uh, we can see Joel look forward uh, to such a day where the Holy Spirit would dwell uh, in man. And he would remove the sins of man. Man, we see in chapter number 2, in verse number 28, it reads, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servant and upon the handmaid and to those uh, I will pour out my spirit. Man, even in the Old Testament we see prophecy going forth that the Holy Spirit would come. And in Isaiah we would also see uh, in chapter number 59, reads on this wise in verse number 19, it says... Uh, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory shall raise uh, in uh, of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. It is the Holy Spirit that does the work. Uh, he also goes on to say in verse number 21, uh, as for me, uh, this is my covenant with them, uh, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee and my word which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart from thy mouth, nor out of thy mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seeds, seed, saith the Lord. From hence forth and forevermore. Jeremiah, even in the Old Testament here, a man would say to us in chapter number 31, Behold, the days are come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh, and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I have made with thy fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be my covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law uh, their inward, uh, into their inward part and write it in their hearts. I will be their God. And they will be my people. You see, amen, that even in the Old Testament, 
Man, that there's predictions of the Lord Jesus Christ's return. In his return, he would come to save them and to deliver them from the hand of the enemy. Old Testament prophecy, uh, we'll see that so much in the book of Acts that uh, uh, when Peter is preaching, you'll see uh, in the book of Acts, most of the sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost was him just simply reciting from the Old Testament prophecies. Man, it was the death of Jesus Christ uh, that paid the price for our sins. It was a man, uh, him coming to die for us that made the difference. Only with this uh, eternal sacrifices of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, could the spirit of God dwell in us. Man, Jesus atoned our sins. And today we have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ because of the work that Jesus did on Calvary's cross because of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so there perhaps are some of you who are saying, well, brother preacher, I was baptized already. Uh, isn't that enough? I'm glad you asked. No, it isn't enough. Uh, the word baptism comes from uh, the Greek word uh, baptisma, meaning submerge or immerse. Uh, most, uh, 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 it is important to understand that that is only one step in your walk with Jesus Christ. It is to understand that John the Baptist made it very clear, amen, that uh, I will baptize you with water, amen, but not many days hence, there's one coming behind me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to latch. Amen. He will baptize you with power of the Holy Ghost. I praise and thank God today for the Holy Ghost. Baptism uh, in water is a symbol. It's an identification uh, with Jesus Christ dying on Calvary's cross. The old nature dies. And we give way for the new nature to have its way and will in our lives. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is important. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, Paul declares in Romans chapter number 8, uh, in verse number 9, he declares, amen, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you are none of his. I'm sorry, uh, brother and sister, I know the preacher told you that if you repeat after me, uh, you are saved. But I've come to tell you it takes more than just repeating after the preacher for you to be saved. You need the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody would type that into the comments. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen, the Holy Ghost is important in the life of the believer. And Jesus understood the importance of the life of the Holy Spirit walking with us and being with us. Jesus declares uh, unto John, amen, uh, unless one, uh, in the book of John, he declares unless one is born uh, of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God man it takes more than just shaking the preacher's hand uh, we talked last week about being a part of the church uh, being a part of uh, the church house is one thing but being a part of the ecclesia the called out ones is another thing I don't know about you we used to sing a song uh, years ago say when the saints go marching in Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. The only way you can be a part of that number is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Uh, Jesus later explains uh, to be born again means to be born of the Spirit uh, where the Spirit of God dwells in the life of the believer. Uh, God himself takes up residence inside of our earthly bodies and the spirit of God begins to guide us through this life. And I know that many of us believe that uh, once you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that's it. Uh, but the Holy Ghost is to do more than just simply uh, to get you to speak in tongues initially, uh, you know, because uh, speaking in tongues is just the initial evidence that one has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is then for us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So what does it mean for us to have the spirit of God living inside of us? It is a process of redemption after the Holy Spirit convicts our heart. Amen. And, and uh, we are separated from our sins. We are drawn to Jesus Christ. 
and to his will and to his way. Man, we are now uh, a part of the family of Jesus Christ. And so the steps to salvation, number one, is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Man, God convicts us. He convicts us of our sin. Man, in John chapter number 16 and verse number 8, it says, And when he has come, he will convict uh, the world of its sins and of righteousness and of judgment. Uh, and then, amen, after the conviction, and some of you may be feeling that conviction right now. And I would like to suggest to you that on this morning, woe unto you if you feel no conviction when you do wrong. That's a very dangerous place to be in uh, when you can do wrong and treat, mistreat people and mistreat others and not feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. When you're truly saved, there's a conviction that happens. Even when you don't do anything wrong, there's a conviction that happens when you fall out with your brother or your sister. Or not even just with your brother or your sister, with your family member, with your husband or your wife or your, your children or, or whoever you're with. You cannot serve God in spirit and in truth and not be on the same page in true fellowship with your brother and your sister. Hello, lights. I say that again. You cannot be in true fellowship with God and be out of fellowship with your brother or your sister. That's why the Lord God declares, amen, that uh, he said the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord thy God. And the second is like it unto it that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you can't worship God. I don't know about you, but I can't preach right. Man, if I'm falling out with my brother or sister, I want to get it straight. I want to I wanna make sure that I'm in fellowship with my brother and my sister. It's important to me uh, that, I, that I worship God. The Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, true worship uh, requires true fellowship. And true fellowship requires true conviction. Uh, not only true conviction, but uh, the next step is faith. One must have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God, lest any man shall boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. Uh, we are saved by faith. It takes faith, amen, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then once you have acquired that faith, it then comes repentance. Repentance is important. Amen. Romans chapter number two, verse number four says, Or do ye despise the riches or of his goodness, forbearing and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Should lead you to repentance. Uh, you can't be in true fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and not repent. Man, I don't know about this Holy Ghost that some of you have uh, where well, you can party on Saturday night and then praise God on Sunday morning. Uh, no, true repentance is not from the mouth. It's from the heart. It means that one turns away from what they used to do. That's why the, amen, the uh, old church used to say the things I used to do. I don't do them anymore. I know uh, we believe that you can do anything now and be saved, but I beg your pardon, my brother or sister. Holiness is still required for a walk with Jesus Christ. Man, and then uh, forgiveness is important. Amen, that Christ would forgive us. Uh, Acts chapter number 2, uh, excuse me, 26 and 18, it says, Open their eyes in order to turn them uh, from darkness to light and from power uh, uh, from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and an inheritance among those uh, who are sanctified by faith in me. There must be forgiveness, amen, uh, in the life of the believer. And once you have done those things, then you are justified, amen, by the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter number 5, verse number 18 says, Therefore has thou uh, one man offers judgment came unto all men, resulting in condemnation, even so uh, through one man righteous, uh, righteousness act, uh, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. God has justified me. Man, and who God has justified when God has cleaned you up. Amen. There's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That means that I don't have to be guilty of the things that I have done in uh, before. And then the final step to receiving Christ in your life. Amen. Then there is regeneration. 
Regeneration just simply means, amen, that we are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, they are brand new. The Holy Ghost uh, is important. And when the Holy Ghost comes, something happens in the life of the believer. And I know I'm almost out of time, but I, I've come to tell you on this morning, something happens in the life of the believer when they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Man, well, what, what, what happens? Well, uh, the Bible says, uh, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power. Oh, I praise and thank God for power. Uh, because when you've got the Holy Ghost power walking around in your life, it gives you the power to resist the enemy. The Holy Ghost gives you power uh, to, to turn away from the things that you used to do. Man, that word power uh, comes from the Greek word dunamis. Amen. And that word simply means like dynamite. It gives you uh, a supernatural strength. Man, I praise and thank God, man, for power from on high. I have been made brand new. I have been transformed. I have been recreated by the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does all of that mean, Brother Wilkins? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, the Holy Ghost gives you power. Yes, Lord, and I praise and thank God, amen, that I haven't always done the right thing. But I praise and thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. I know that some of you are thanking God for your new Mercedes Benz, but I thank and praise God for the power of the Holy Ghost. What does the Holy Ghost power do? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Uh, the Holy Ghost power promised to teach us. It promised to be a guide in our lives. Uh, and we need a teacher now. You know, we don't cherish teaching like we should. We don't have an appreciation for teaching like we should. But John chapter number 14, verse number 26 says, But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father has sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance uh, whatsoever uh, I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. The Holy Ghost will teach you to stop doing certain things. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. The Bible declares if any man should lack wisdom, they can ask it of God. Amen. And I praise and thank God for the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's why God hasn't blessed you the way that you want to be blessed right now because the Holy Ghost is teaching you things. The Holy Ghost is maturing you. He's growing you up. He's teaching you uh, uh, perseverance. He's teaching you how to suffer. I feel like preaching y'all. I said he's teaching you uh, uh, how to live a holy life. God cannot bless you beyond your means. He's too much of a loving father to give you something that you can't handle. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And I praise and thank God for that. I, I have three children. Uh, and my oldest will be uh, 17 this year. Glory be to God. And, and then I've got a 13 year old uh, and then I've got a 3 year old that's a long story I'll tell you about that later uh, but uh, 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 glory be to God uh, uh, I can there's some things that my 17 year old can handle that my 3 year old can't uh, uh, and there's some things that I've taught my 17 year old uh, almost 17 year old that I have yet to teach my 3 year old Yes, Lord, and I've come to declare to you today that God is teaching us, but he teaches us as we go, and he will not give you more than you can handle. Amen. I used to hear our church mother and fathers tell us that the Lord won't give you more than you can handle. And we used to only take that when it comes to burdens and when it came to weight. But I declare to you on this morning that even blessings, God won't give you more than you can handle. Because he is a teacher. Not only is he a teacher, but the Holy Spirit is also intercedes for us. 
He intercedes for us uh, on our behalf. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 20 says, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know that we should, uh, uh, for we not know what we should pray for uh, as we ought. But it is a man, the Spirit maketh intercessions for us while with groanings which cannot be uttered. I praise and thank God that God understands our groan. He understands our tears. He understands the tears that fall off of your cheek. And I want to tell you today that the Holy Spirit is not just, amen, an intercessor, but the Holy Spirit is also our joy and our peace. And I praise and thank God that the Holy Spirit is my joy and he is my peace. Yes, Lord, because when uh, all hell is breaking loose around me, when people seem to be cracking up all around me, I praise and thank God that God has given me joy in the middle of it. Uh, yes, Lord, God, God knows how to give you joy even when it seems as if you should be cracking up, when it seems as if you should be losing your grip. Isn't it amazing how God will give you joy in the midst of the storm? Isn't it amazing how God will give you peace even when chaos is breaking out around you? And that's why Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22 uh, and verse number 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, uh, goodness, uh, and faith, uh, meekness, temperaments uh, against such things. There is no law. I praise and thank God for the joy that God has given to me. Man, and when the Holy Ghost has come unto you, the Holy Ghost also brings gifts, uh, brings gifts in your life. And I want to tell you today, so many people and too many folks are trying to serve God in the house of God without having the Holy Ghost. And I've come to tell you on this morning that your talent isn't good enough. You need the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, do you hear me, brother preacher? Do you hear me, sister praise leader? Do you hear me, brother deacon? I know you're talented and you're gifted, but you need the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, I wish somebody would just type that into the comments. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter number two, verse number eight says, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, uh, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. Lest any man shall boast, for we are his workmanship, created uh, in Christ Jesus unto good works, which uh, God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are saved for the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. Man and God also, amen, gives us spiritual boldness through the Holy Ghost. Gives us spiritual boldness to be able, amen, to handle what the enemy throws at us. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, uh, beginning at verse number, I believe it's 31, it says, uh, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and uh, they were assembled together, and they were all uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, and spake the word of God with boldness. Yes, Lord, when you have the Holy Ghost, uh, you can speak the word of God with boldness. And I've come to tell you on today uh, that there are so many of you who may be watching me today who have not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I come to tell you when the Holy Ghost comes, uh, it brings gifts with it. Amen. It brings joy and peace and happiness. Uh, hallelujah. It brings boldness with it. And I know that it is some of you who are saying, well, brother preacher, it doesn't take all of that. Uh, but I come to tell you on this moment uh, that you need the Holy Ghost uh, for the power that the Holy Ghost brings. Uh, and you can't be in the church of God uh, without the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why the word of God declares, uh, and these signs shall follow them. Uh -huh. that believe in my name uh, they will speak with new tongues uh, uh, if they drink any deadly thing uh, it shall not bother them uh, hallelujah they'll lay hands on the sick uh, and they will recover uh, and I've come to tell you on this morning uh, that you need the Holy Ghost uh, and when the Holy Ghost comes uh, it comes with power uh, and I don't know what's wrong with you uh, if you've got a 
Holy Ghost uh, that doesn't possess any power. Uh, but I need the Holy Ghost uh, for everyday living. Uh, I don't need the Holy Ghost uh, just to be in church. Uh, I don't need the Holy Ghost uh, just to sing in the choir. Uh, I don't need the Holy Ghost uh, just to lead the devotional service. Uh, I don't need the Holy Ghost uh, just to stand before you.
change in my life today if you don't have the Holy Ghost you need a change to happen in your life you need something within you that will change you from within and the Holy Ghost is ready for the task today I suggest that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior receive the gift of the Holy Spirit amen with the evidence initial evidence of speaking in tongues amen and work out your salvation and bear the fruit of the Spirit and watch God work in your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. I've got something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Come on, let me hear you. I've got something on the inside, working on the outside. Yeah. 